Welcome to the Ministries of Everlasting Gospel Kingdom Ministries. Uh, this Sunday morning, praise God, April 29th, <laughs> January 29th, we praise God for another opportunity for us to gather together around the Word of God. We thank God for the amazing week that we've been having, and I'm praising, I'm praising God that, that I'm, I, I'm sure that God's been uh, involved in your, your particular life also. And uh, uh, we wanted to get started with this teaching, praise God, which will be a continuation of some of the things that we've been doing. And so uh, uh, we, always, we always say we want you to subscribe, we want you to like, and uh, uh, even comment. Uh, that lets us know that, praise God, what, you, what you're thinking about the teaching and whatnot. Um, we'll jump right into it after we do a word of prayer. So let's go to the throne of grace together. Father, we just bless you, we praise you, we worship you. Thank you, dear God, in the name of Jesus, for the work that you've begun in us. We know that you will complete it and finish it. Thank you for the privilege of serving you in our lifetime. And now we ask you to give us wisdom and revelation and insight as we uh, uh, work, we deal with your, your word and with the Holy Spirit. And uh, bless somebody, heal somebody, deliver somebody, dear God. We'll give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, once again, praise God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, we are uh, blessed. Amen. We are blessed. And I mean blessed to have a privilege of, of in our lifetime knowing who God is or having uh, a belief in, in, in the God of our salvation, even our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it's just a blessing. I'm feeling a little, uh, well, we used to say overwhelmed, but I'm not overwhelmed. I'm feeling a little whelmed right now in the spirit and uh, uh, just excited about what I'm seeing in Jesus' name. All right, let's jump into this word. We've been talking about being activating our prayer altar, the priesthood altar, and activating it, moving into our position. And we talked about it last week strongly. We're probably going to talk a little bit more about it this week because I can't take you farther until we get this point. When we get this point, then we can praise God, move on. But without this point, there's nothing's going to work uh, uh, right for us. Now, you you might get an old familiar spirit that would jump in there and try to make you think you're doing right. Our old demonic spirit working frog-like miracles that make you think you're doing right. <laughs> make you think you're doing right. Uh, but it won't be the genuine workings of God. And we're not until we get this one place right. And it's the foundation of our building our altar. And then from that place, we'll move into learning how to cover uh, the people that are on our, our altar, covering our spouses, covering, uh, covering our children, covering all of our uh, uh, extended family, covering the, 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 your church, your businesses, your jobs, your schools. Your, and we're we're going to learn how to do all these things once we get the proper foundation in place. There's no, there's no need, need even calling. The prayer up here doesn't work without the power power down here there's you can you can put all the the light switches in your house you want to put in you can put all the the, the 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 faucets in your house that you want but if you don't have a water source that's coming into the house if you don't have a power source that's coming into your house then the faucets nor the light uh, fixtures none of those things are going to work anyway so we got to get this foundation uh, place fixed first. And we've called that foundation place none other than our Lord Jesus. Last week, uh, or the last program, we dealt specifically with the God who sent Jesus into the world, sent him into the world to fix something. We've got to catch that, and we've got to accept that. The God who sent Jesus into the world sent him into the world to fix something. He didn't send Jesus into the world for religion. 
Uh, it's not religion. It's, it's about, uh, is there a God? And does he care about the earth? Does he care about humanity? Is there a God who knows the principles of light and darkness, negatives and positives? Is there a God who knows the principles of physics and energy and uh, uh, atoms and, and uh, um, uh, quarks? And is there a, a God who knows all the deeper things of, of, of the existence or the, the, the world itself, of in, uh, electrons and energy? And is there that kind of God? And we believe that there is. And that God is the one who recognized, uh, 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 he from the beginning gave us warning. And now the warning looks like it might be religion. Don't do this or don't do that. And you might say, well, so, see, that's just religion. No, it's principles. They're teaching us much deeper things. They're trying to uh, get across to us many things that uh, 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 is, it, it, he put it in a very simplistic way, but it's, it's, it's very deep. Very deep teaching, teaching us the principles of the operation of the entirety of the world. Is there a God like that? Yes. He sent Jesus into the world, the foundation of our salvation, the foundation of, uh, of what, we, uh, what we believe that we can, we can build uh, an ark, uh, build an, an, an altar to, to, uh, to, uh, to, establish, to establish victory in our own personal lives and an altar that can establish victory in uh, 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 the life of our family, uh, the life of our, uh, our, 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 our city state, nation, and even the life of the world. We believe that it's the people of God who will rule and reign in the earth. God makes us a kingdom of priests, a royal line of priests. And that is going to affect the world in such a way that uh, 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 um, uh, it's going to bring in uh, a peace. It's going to bring in um, a security, a joy. Uh, God has created it and designed it this way. All right, I want to jump into the teaching today. I, I, I want to finish with this this point that I've been laboring in uh, uh, regarding the activating. We started this is activation number three, probably, or maybe even number four, but the activating of our own prayer altar. Uh, we've learned what it is. We've learned the, the principle of why God wanted to do it. We've learned the posture and, and how do we present ourselves to God in, in this priestly um, mode. We've learned many things about what the priesthood is and and the why of God. Now uh, that we've learned those things, we want to activate it. We want to build our altar and begin our process of development in the operation as priests, the school of the priesthood. We want to begin. We want to build our altar and began to learn how to operate in development as priests. Now, there are some Christians, uh, I, I just have to say, sad to say also, that believe we do nothing. We get saved. God sent Jesus into the world. We get saved, and now we're just waiting to go to heaven. They don't believe in uh, the works of a son or a daughter of God. James, the Apostle James said in the book of James, uh, show me your faith. Uh, uh, um, and he, he says, he said, you show me your faith in just your talk. And he says, and I'll show you my faith in my works and whatnot. So uh, 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 we're moving to this place now where uh, we're not just saints that believe in uh, uh, the salvation that God gave us, uh, but that uh, and, and that we are not just waiting till we get to heaven, but we're believing, we believe in the salvation he gave us and a process of maturity along the way that makes us into what he created us to be. The Bible says in the book of Romans, it says, and God in, in whom he foreknew, God foreknew us. He also predestinated. He gave us a destiny before we got here. He says, whom he foreknew, then he also predestinated 
destined. You were walking around not looking for God, but God had placed something in you, and it's a destiny. It's a destiny. All things work together for the good to them that love the Lord, them that are called according to his purposes. The purposes of God are in your life. The, 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 you're, a, you're a block, you're a building, you're, 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 you're a stone in the building of God uh, of the earth. Each generation adding their part uh, and each generation memorialized in the, in the annals of heaven. And God will, uh, 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 we'll learn more about that in the, in the days to come. Might not learn it all on the earth, but we will learn about these things. All right, so God wants us to be priests. We've learned that, and now we're into this place that we call activating the, our own altar. And we, we discuss very strongly, and we're going to look at this, uh, Jesus. Jesus is the, is the foundation uh, that we should first recognize. And if we did not uh, recognize him, we're not recognizing the place of the empowerment of the altar. You, you don't have the ability to be a priest without the empowerment coming into the house called Jesus. You don't have the ability to be a priest uh, uh, without uh, accessing the power that comes through Jesus Christ. You don't even have the ability. We talked about this a little bit less uh, less teaching. You don't even have the ability to get saved without the the power of uh, without accessing the power of the of uh, of the one that we call Jesus. We confess with our mouth. We believe in our heart that God has given him for salvation. God has raised him. For, God has caused him to to be uh, 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 be crucified. God has caused him to be raised from the dead. God has caused him to be a sin. It, and if we believe these things in our heart and confess them with our mouth, then we access this term that we call salvation. We access this term that we call salvation. Blotting out the handwritings that was on the wall against us. Blotting out every uh, uh, um, that manner of generational down the lines of our uh, family and wh uh, whatsoever. All these things blotted out against us through accessing the Jesus of the resurrection, through accessing the Jesus of the cross, through accessing the blood of this Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. So we said that unless we did that, we don't even have power for salvation uh, to, to, to get saved. And now we're saying the same thing again. Unless we continue to stay in union with this Jesus, if we don't stay in union, if we don't stay in connection, you cannot be a priest, and I'm going to show you that by reading some scripture, because uh, this is these are the, the uh, again I, today I definitely want to get past this first step, the first part of the process of building my altar, the foundation. Believe on Him whom God has sent, namely Jesus Christ. Um, we can't bear a uh, 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 fruit. We can't uh, in our lives and our families uh, for eternity uh, uh, without this union in Christ. There is no other way. There is no other way for us as Christians to bear fruit. There's no other way for Christians to do uh, works of eternal things, create fruit that will last Create fruit that the Father is pleased with. There is no other way. And I'm keep. Uh, you might say, "Well, you sound like a broken record, Apostle." But we've got to get this point. There is no other way other than the the one Jesus who who has who has overcome death, hell, and the grave, death, hell, and the grave, and has ascended far above Lucifer, ascended far above Satan, asc ascended far above every name that's named in this this world and that which is to come. In the book of Colossians, the apostle Paul says, he is the prince of the kings of the earth, Jesus. Jesus is over every principality. Jesus is over every power. Jesus has a name above every other name. And there's no other way to, to move ourselves 
into uh, it, it is by moving ourselves into Jesus. It is by faith and access and faith that we access us our position in Him, and which brings us up, which raises us up far above. Somebody say far above. You gotta get this point far above. If you don't get this point, saints, then we then we cannot uh, move into the ruling and reigning. We cannot move into power and authority where God gave apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. God gave these people, praise God, to teach uh, all of us how to do it. He didn't give these um, fivefold ministry gifts just so that they might be set on a shelf and sparkling, shining, uh, 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 and and they be the, 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 the they be the ones that 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 uh, 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 only operate uh, uh, as above. No, yes, he meant for them to shine as those that are above. But but he but it's it, it's it's to teach all of us about our ability to be above. How you get above again? You got to get in him who is raised above. I know you might oh, there was a thousand people named Jesus in those days, apostle. How do you say that about that? No, there's only one Jesus that God gave for this purpose. And this is the, this is the one that ascended. This is the one that raised up. This is the one that, that is above. And the Bible teaches, the apostles taught us that we can find ourselves uh, raised up in him. In the mind of God, God said we were raised up with him. Because why? Because God gave us a place in God, in Christ, before the foundation of the world. So the resurrection of Christ, the crucifixion, the, the, the the, the resurrection and the ascension, we can find our place in him by faith. The only way, no other way to operate in the power of being over. No other way to operate in the power to be able to rescue, to help, to pull pull others up and to put our, our, our fan, over, uh, glory over our family. Watch out uh, for a demon that comes and says he's He's greater than God. He's greater than that. Oh, no, it's not greater than God. Okay, St. John chapter 15. Look at that for just a moment. Let me read this. And I'm going to read 15, uh, chapter 15 of St. John, verse 1 through 8. He said, Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that does not produce fruit. He also trims every branch that... um, that produces fruit to prepare it to produce even more. Verse um, uh, three: You have been al- you have already been prepared to produce more fruit by by the teaching I have given you. Watch verse four: Stay joined to me, and I will stay joined to you. No branch can produce fruit alone. It must stay connected to the vine. And if it stay, it, 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 uh, you, it must stay connected to the vine. It is the same with you. You cannot produce fruit alone. You must stay joined to me. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you stay joined to me and, to, and I to you, you will produce plenty of fruit. But, but separate from me, you won't be able to do anything. If you don't stay joined join to me, you will be like a branch that has been thrown out and has dried up. All the dead branches like that are gathered up and thrown into the fire and burned. Stay joined together with me and, and follow my teachings. If you do this, you can ask anything you want, and I and it will be given unto you. And, and this will show that you are my followers by producing much fruit. This will bring honor to my father. The first step in activating the priesthood is you must get connected and stay connected to Jesus. Christ. You must get connected and stay connected to Jesus Christ. He is the vine and he is uh, uh, and we are the branches. Look at another place over in Ephesians chapter 1 and 19. This is another powerful verse of scripture. 
119, and we'll read through uh, uh, 22. Ephesians 119, when we read through verse 22. Okay, so he says, and what is... And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, when he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and all power and might and dominion and every name that's named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come and have put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. So here we have a a, 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 a place that explicitly uh, uh, speaks of speaks of how that uh, we've been see uh, he's raised up far above all things the scriptures teaching that he's uh, 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 every name that's named principalities dominions might all of those terms when they are used uh, he's raised up above principalities powers dominions might all of those uh, speak to the hierarchy in the heavens it's the hierarchy in God's spiritual dimension but he but it's also the hierarchy in the demonic world also uh, so if you have principalities powers uh, 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 dominions, all of these things speak of hierarchy of, of, of the demonic world. And so he says, Jesus is raised up above all of them. And this verse brings this out very clear. Now you can see that over in uh, Ephesians, a very popular verse of scripture, uh, in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, where it said, we fight it not against blood, flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities, powers, and all of those things are speaking against, speaking again about uh, the hierarchy of the demonic world, the, 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 the fallen power world, and Jesus is above them all. And that's why Paul teaches at that place in, in Ephesians 6 that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against all these powers. But the way we can wrestle with him. He, 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 as we read on in Ephesians 6, it'll say, now you put on the whole armor of God and then you stand, you, you learn how to stand. And why would Paul tell us to do that if we couldn't do it? And is he saying that we are stronger than the principalities of Satan? Is he, is he saying that we're stronger than the powers, the dominions of Satan? Yes, he is. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power. And how do we put up on the whole armor of God? By getting ourselves in Christ. Shield of faith, sword of the spirit, all of these things deal with uh, aspects uh, that were given through the spirit of God in our union with Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, but again, it's showing and teaching us the, 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 the superiority of Christ over the demonic world, the superiority of Christ over the fallen angel power world. And these are, this is, this is a, a great place. Uh, he says that we are seated. He's gave Jesus to be the head to all things of the church, the, the Jesus being the head, the church being the body and the body is all things is over all things and have put all things under the feet all things under the feet, under the, under the foot uh, of Jesus, of the body uh, of the church. All things are under. But we have to believe it. We can't uh, see the devil roaring like a great lion at us. And as he roars as a great lion, then we retreat and run. He's not a he's not a great lion. He's an he's an imitation. He's he's a fake. Now does he have does he have a power? And a, 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 yes, he has. He has also authority because we've given him authority. We've given him authority in our society. We give him authority in our. Uh, uh, our, our laws, we've given authority in many, many areas. And so, yes, he does have some ability, some power, but we need to learn how to operate in our power, in our authority, in our dominion. Some people say, well, I don't need to learn how to do that because I'm getting ready to get raptured and I'm going to heaven. Well, until you go to heaven, you're going to need to learn how to utilize the glory of God, even right down here. Let's look at another one, praise God. Here's a promise that God gives to the church. 
that I think is a is a is a is a, and the, the, the promises are just off the chart. The, the the things that belong to us are just stupendous. The, the things that belong to us that that Christ says, uh, I, 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 I guess as an unbeliever, we, we, as an unbeliever, uh, you would say these are un, I can't believe it. But even as Christians. Some of us, we can't believe it. The promises that God makes to us or the Lord makes to us is unbelievable. To many are unbelievable. Let's look at one. Look at Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. And this is not talking about when we get to heaven now because uh, 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 you'll see that. Revelation 3 and 20, he says, Behold, I stand at the door. Now, this is Jesus knocking on the door of the first, I mean, of the last church age. He's, or, then, or you can say that it was the, the church of Laodicea over 2,000 years ago. It's still Jesus knocking on the door of the church and, and it's not knocking on the door of the world. He says, and uh, he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. Now, we're going to get into this a little more in future teachings about open the door, open the door. It's very important that you you understand that you have to open a door to, to get to to get to the the, uh, the, the dimension uh, of, of of moving into him at at his highest level you don't want to just be in Jesus and, and his suffering on the cross you want to claim the works of that came as a result of that, but 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 the, the cross is a bloody place. The cross is a is a, a place of murder. The, the cross is a place of massacre. Now, what does it mean for us? It means deliverance for us. And I heard somebody singing the song at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light It's where we first saw the light It's where we first saw the light. Now, as we look forward into uh, his ascension. We see that that you know he, he's not facing the cross and the pain of the cross anymore. Uh, 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 but, but we'll get more into that. It's very important that we understand the concept of opening the door. Opening the door. It's going to take us from the pain of the cross. Uh, it's going to take us from uh, the attack of the enemy to try to to try to kill us. It's going to take us into some deeper things. It's going to take us into some more liberating things and 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 and, and deeper into the blessing of God. Look at what he says. He says, "Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I'll come in with him and sup with him. He'll, and sup with him and he with me." Watch what it says in verse twenty one. To him that overcomes. Will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I have overcome and sat down with my father in his throne? Now, this to me blows my mind, because if you if, if you really read what it's saying, and this is one of the things that I'm saying that for Christians, how, can, uh, how do you believe these? He says, if you overcome, I'll, I'll grant you to sit with me in my throne, even as I have also overcame. And have sat down with my father in his throne. This is very deep, child of God. That, that there's a place for you, Jesus said, in his throne. That means that you, he, he calls you into a type of royalty. Uh, uh, he, he calls you into a, a type of, uh, the throne is uh, a, a, a place of dominion, uh, a, a place of being over. And, and Jesus calls us, he, say, he says, if you can overcome, he says, I can grant you a place to be seated in my throne. And, and he describes what that is because he says, he said, just as I have been seated in my father's throne. That is some deep, deep teaching. Most people will say, yeah, well, when we get to heaven, you know, that that's what it will be all that will be like. And I knew I know that's what a lot of people would say. Well, if you believe that, let's look at another one over in uh, verse uh, uh, 20, uh, two verse 22 of Revelations. Verse 2, where he says, and verse 26, and he says, He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Now, is that in heaven? 
No, that's not in heaven. That's right down on earth. And he says, and I will come to him and will sup with him and he with me. Well, no, no, I'm reading the wrong place. He says, I will give power over the nations. Look at what it says in verse 27. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And as a, pot, a, a vessel of potter shall they be broken into shivers, even as I receive of my father. And I will give him the morning star. Let him that, that let, let uh, he that have an ear to hear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto to the churches. Revelation 5 says that we're going to rule in the earth. We're going to rule in the earth. Now, all of this is a result of sitting down with him in his ascended place. Somehow being able to be caught up and seated in his ascended place. I don't know if I used that word right at that time because I know as soon as I said caught up, somebody says, okay, that's when the rapture comes. No, there's a place of dominion and authority in him right now. Paul taught that many times that we have been seated together with him in heavenly places. We're seated far above all principalities and powers and, and, and those things and in, in, uh, negative things in this world. And that's, that's teaching us that's teaching us that uh, uh, not when we get to heaven only. It's it's the, it, it's 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 being one with Him, being in union with Him, and being moving into the, into the heavens with Him. Colossians two and ten teaches us that we are complete in Him, which is, and He is the head of all principalities and power, and we are complete in Him. Now, that's powerful. That is very powerful. We are complete uh, in him, which is the head of all principalities and all power. See, we have to accept that because now we, at ease, begin to move into our ruling dimension, move into the dimension of our authority, move into the dimension of our uh, uh, um Move into the dimension of uh, about being in in one with Him. Okay, let's take for a few minutes and let's let's just begin to through faith uh, 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 declare some things. Uh, praise God uh, uh, for, for for activation. I want you. The first thing I want you to begin to declare is, is Lord, I'm open. I'm here. Uh, I, 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 if there are new levels, I want to go to them. Lord, if if. Uh, 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 bring me, bring me into this maturity process. Uh, 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 come on, let's just begin that. God, take me into this maturity process. Mm, come on, let's do that. Lord, take me into this maturity process from dimension to dimension, from level to level. Mm, mm. Come on, follow me here now. Follow me, God. I, I, Lord Jesus, I'm seated in you. I'm seated in you. I'm seated with you in your throne. You are the branch. You are the vine and I am the branch. I'm seated in you. Come on, do that. I'm seated in you. Lord, I'm, I'm a priest in you. Oh, hallelujah. I'm a priest in you. I'm raised up far above all principalities and powers and authority and those things named in this world and that which is to come. Now do one more thing for me. Just begin to say, Lord... I bring my family that I'm connected to up into this high place. Come on, we, we, we're getting ready to get started building now. Come on, I bring my family into this place. I receive glory on behalf of my son. I receive glory on behalf of my, uh, my daughter. I receive glory on behalf of my business. I receive glory on behalf of my church. Come on, come on. I offer up, hallelujah, the first fruit of my existence. And I call myself seated in you. I believe the word. I accept the word of God. And I am the blessed. Come on, I feel the spirit of God in this place. Come, on, submit yourself uh, wholly to the Lord regarding that sickness, that uh, uh, circumstance. And begin to say, sickness and disease, you're under my feet now. You're under my feet. Come on, do that. Sickness and disease, you're under my feet. Come on, poverty, it's some situation that's been bothering you that you can't seem to shake away from. Just begin to, say, to speak to it and say, poverty, you're under my feet now. You can't follow me in this place where Jesus is. Come on, can you do that? Come on, anxiety, no peace, no ability to rest. Bring those things. Come on up, bring them up there. 
at the throne. And begin now to make a declaration that those things are defeated. You're beneath me. You're below me. You're not apart. You can't fly uh, in these heights and in these depths where I am in Jesus Christ. I give you and I give God the glory. Just begin to enter into a rest concerning his splendidness. Enter into the rest concerning his magnificence. Enter into the rest concerning his, his, his gloriousness. Come on. Enter into the rest. Hallelujah. 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 Now be healed, be delivered, be set free. Come on. Be healed, be delivered, be set free, be prospered. Oh my, be filled with the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. We praise God for another opportunity. Praise God that he gave us. Amen. That we can get in the word of God together. I have been, it's been exciting teaching these teachings. We're going to jump into some more of it on uh, uh, this week as we go forward. And uh, 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 I'm sure God's got more to add to where we've been. We've done the first step in building our altar. Now we're going to move up. And we're going to move up and understand some things. There's an open door there. There's an open door. And God wants us to enter into it. In Jesus' name. All right. Praise God Almighty. <laughs> Remember the teachings, amen, on every Sunday morning, praise God, at 9 a.m. And the teachings, praise God, on every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. Also, you went uh, Pastor Elaine Brown on at uh, uh, Mondays at 7 p.m. And of course, we've uh, uh, don't forget, praise God, as the Lord leads you uh, in your online giving, praise God, you'll see our PayPal and also our uh, uh, Cash App uh, address there. And as the Lord leads you, as the Lord leads you, Amen. <laughs> As the Lord leads you, be a blessing, and we know that God is going to look out for you. In Jesus' mighty name. All right. We thank God again for today. We say you're the bless. You're not going to be the curse, the head, not the tail, above and not beneath. God commands the blessing to your life. And the word that's going forth from him, it will not return void but it will accomplish the thing that he sent it to do. Be blessed. We'll see you the next time in Jesus' name. Shalom. Be blessed.